So far, we've been building up our repertoire of Python expressions. We've seen numbers and strings as primitive data objects. We've seen assignment, the ability to give a name to a value. We've seen input and output characteristics. We've seen the ability to make comparisons. And we've added in looping constructs, things like for and while loops. With that set of tools, they turn out to be sufficient to give us what we call a Turing complete language. And what does that mean? It says just with that set of tools, anything that's computable, we can compute. So we can compute anything. That's actually amazing. With just that set of tools, anything that's computable, we can capture with a description using those sets of tools. Sounds like we're done. And of course we're not. And part of the reason we're not is that the code we're able to write so far, those scripts that we've done, lack what we call abstraction. And let me give you some reasons what I mean by that and then what the definition of abstraction is. For example, as you saw before, every time I want to use a script, I've got to reload the file. And if I want to do it with some different uh, parameters, I've got to change the values of variables before I run that file. Moreover, or more importantly, I can't use the same variable names other places in the code. If I've got a piece of code that's using x, y, and z, I've got to make sure that they're not actually get accidentally getting changed somewhere else. So I'm stuck with having to be very careful about the use of names. And finally, imagine I've got a piece of code that's computing the maximum of two numbers. I might want to use that many places. I'm going to have to copy it throughout the code. Doesn't sound too bad, except it gets very quickly cumbersome to be able to maintain that code. Suppose I change my mind about the actual details of how I do that computation. I've got to then search through the code and find all the places where I was doing that and make that change. Otherwise, I'm going to mess up. So I lack abstraction. And what we're going to do is add the idea of a function. A function is going to give us a way to capture a computation, to wrap it up in a package, and then treat that function as if it were a primitive, something provided to us by Python that we can just use. Let's look at that. Here's a very simple example, just to get us started. Suppose that we want to take two numbers whose names or variable names are x and y, and we want to compute the maximum of it and bind that to the name z. Here's a very simple script that would do it. Assuming I've got values for x and y, I just do the comparison. If x is greater than y, I bind z to x. So there's a binding there. And if not, I bind z to y. But as I already said, notice the problem here. I'm going to have to copy this everywhere that I want to use it. And that's going to be a real pain. And I can't reuse x and y. Because if I did, I might accidentally change the values here, and that's going to be a problem. So I want to capture this. And keep using that word capture. Let's see what that means. The idea is that we want to wrap up that computation, that set of mechanical steps, that recipe, within a particular scope so that we can treat that function, that computation, as if it were a primitive. Then I could just use it by simply calling its name, using the name, and I'll get back that procedure object, and giving some input into that function. We'll see how to do that in a second. But a key thing by doing this is that the internal details, the steps inside of the computation, are going to be hidden from the users. They won't know what they actually are. They're going to just treat this like what we call a black box, something that we can use that satisfies a particular contract. But we don't need to know the details inside. And more importantly, what happens inside won't have any effect on computations outside the scope of this function. What does it look like? Well, here's the syntax for a definition of a function. It's got, and let me in fact give you the next pieces of it here, it's got a keyword def that tells Python I'm about to create a definition of a procedure. It has a name for a function. And I've put that here in angle braces just to say it'll be some particular instance. And the name can be any legal Python name. And then within parentheses, we're going to have a sequence of 0, 1, or more formal parameters, names for variables. And those names are going to be used in the function body. And then we have a colon here. That is followed by the body of the function, which is any sequence of legal Python expressions that's going to do the actual computation. And what we'll see is that within that body, we're going to use the names of the formal parameters to identify the places where we want to use the values associated with those parameters. So those variable names are going to be used inside the function body. And of course, there's an indentation here just to help us determine the scope or the length of the function procedure itself. That's the syntax. Let's look at an example. Well, let me go back to my idea of taking the max of two numbers. Here's a nice function definition. I say define, and there's the name, max. Inside of the parens here, I've got two formal parameters, x and y. And then the body is simply a description of the computations I want to do. 
again, I'm going to compare x to y, and depending on the value, whether it's x is greater than y or not, I'm either going to return the value of x or return the value y. We'll come back to return in a second, but let's just think about how would we use this. So we invoke this, or we call it, as we say, by simply using this sort of an expression. We say, I want to bind z to, and there's the assignment statement, the value that this function max gives me on these arguments 3 and 4. When we do that function call, when we invoke max of 3 and 4, we literally get the values of these expressions, and those are easy in this case, they're just numbers, and given those values, we are going to locally bind x to the value 3, y to the value 4, just as if they were like assignment statements in a very particular scope, and then relative to those bindings, the body expressions are going to be evaluated. And you can see then this is going to do exactly what I did with my little script. So that's cool. Now, what about the body? Well, I said the body can be any legal Python expressions, and in the process, if you like, when I invoke or call a procedure definition, is having bound the variable names to the values, I will simply execute or evaluate each of the expressions of the body in turn until one of two things happens. Either I run out of expressions, I get to the end of the body, in which case a very special value called none is returned, and that is the value of the computation. And if you think about my invocation, I said I was going to bind z to some value. If I get to the end of the expression and there's nothing returned, I'm going to just bind it to none. Alternatively, I will keep executing instructions until I hit that special keyword return that we saw earlier. And in that case, the expression immediately following that keyword return is evaluated, and that value is returned as the value of the function call. That value becomes, if you like, the semantic value of calling that function. And that suggests, if you look back at my code, I'm going to be able to then, in fact, do the computation, and I'm going to be able to reuse it multiple times to get the max of two numbers. So, to summarize this then, the sequence of events are, when we call a function, the expressions for each parameter are evaluated, the normal way they would be in Python, and they are bound to the formal parameter names of the function. There should be one expression for each parameter name. We then transfer control to the first expression in the body of the procedure, the body of the function, and we start evaluating. And those expressions are evaluated or executed until either that return keyword is reached, in which case we get the value of the following expression and return it back, or we are run out of expressions, thereby returning none. And after that, the invocation is bound to the return value. That is, that return value is what is passed out to whatever asks for it, and control transfers to the next piece of code. In the next segment, we're going to look at some details of understanding mechanically how this happens. But there's the idea of a function definition.